Cause I've been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere, man. Across the deserts, bare man. I've breathed the mountain air, man. I've traveled, I've had my chair, man. I've been everywhere. Been to Talamo, seen more King Lee, Island. Man, man, more Art Stork, is more King Island. King Island. Ah, there he is, Lucky Star. He's been everywhere. We're not sure that he's been to King Island, but that's what we're about to do, where we find Greg Morris. G'day, Greg. Yeah, how are we going? Going all right. You've got Neil here. The other one is Rob. You've already spoken to him. King Island uh, is in the middle of Bass Strait, and it's got a place called Curry. That's it. That's all I know. We want to know more. Yeah, well, Curry's the main uh, commercial centre, I guess, but there are other populations. The second main town is Grassy, which is where the Shelight Mine is, what just reopened in the last 12 months or so. So that's fairly progressive and uh, pulling quite a few people. And it's um, Shelight's pretty one of the critical minerals, so it's getting a, had a bit of support from the government. And, um, and they've got a little community there going with a same pub and a service station. And there's what we call our Gold Coast, which is a, another hamlet, you might say, of Narra Cooper, where quite a few retirees. And, uh, yeah, it's our, Gold, east, our east coast town. Uh, Greg, when you say support from the government, when you're sitting in the middle, which government supports you? Tasmania um, <coughs> and, and, of course, the Commonwealth. But, uh, yeah, they did it help to get them, get them up and going with, uh, yeah, pay our connections and things like that, yeah. So you are part of Tassie, not Victoria. That's probably uh, what I was alluding to. Yep. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. So what's the population of the island? Look, it's been around the... Oh, I'm not couldn't tell you exactly that. Probably around the 14 to 1600, yeah. So you wouldn't call it super populous? No, no, no. We, um, we're pretty well spread out, apart from the towns, yeah. There's a lot of agricultural. Jeez, I would have thought pro rata, you were probably the most productive area of Australia, wouldn't you? We well, have actually produced about a thirty percent of Tasmanian beef, um, so that's fairly uh, fairly high on the list. Dairy's dropped off to what it used to be, um, but they're still you know, dairy's still operating. King Island Dairy brand, yeah. So the the dairy stuff is that much ex exported or all exported, or is there a bit of self sufficiency on the island with that? Although I suppose uh, the processing side of it with, with legalities, you can't just go down the road and buy your milk off the farmer, can you? No, no, actually, would you believe we have to get our whole milk in and be bought in from the mainland? So, uh, no, it's definitely not purely for locals, it's exported, but there is a, a cheese shop at, at the uh, at the factory where you can, any visitors and that can pick up some to take back, which is good. Yeah. And roughly, I mean, in terms of time, I'm assuming you can fly in or boat in. How long does it take to get to King Island from either Tassie or Victoria? Not long at all, really. It's only 20. 30 minutes sort of thing. Uh, as I say, it probably takes a longer to get through. If you come from Tullamarine, it probably like, takes a longer to get through the terminal and what it does to fly. <laughs> yeah. So how often do you get off the island? No, not as often as I would like. Probably once, twice a year sort of thing. Unless you've got medical issues where the Tasmanian government supports you to the specialist and that is the main in Tasmania. You have to get away for specialist um, support and that. Yeah, yeah. Greg, there must be a lot to like about the place. You've, I was surprised to find that you'd, you'd been there all your life. It's home, it's the only one you know, and you, you've clearly embraced it. Have, have you ever thought of widening the horizons? Oh, we've, been, we've, traveled, we've traveled a little bit, my wife, and, and uh, we're just very involved in the land. Uh, parents came here, sold the settlers and bought a small 200-acre uh, dairy block originally, and... Uh, and then went into sheep, and we, then we got into beef, and the holdings have increased over the years. And uh, we've got a fair, a fair asset and stake in the island, and I've always been very community minded, so I've always been very involved in the different activities that have happened. Uh, yeah. So the 1,400 people, but what's the actual land mass? I couldn't tell you that. Uh, <laughs> I could, no, sorry, I haven't got that. And, and, uh, it's a disappointing question, isn't yeah. it, really, Greg? I mean, he, you reckon he would have given you a heads up on that so you don't... I was you just know, trying to think, is it 5,000 oh. acres? Is it 10,000 acres? Um, just to give us an idea, uh, yeah. like how many different farming operations would there be on the island? Oh, quite a lot. There are some very, very big farms. There's two sort of semi-corporate, you could say, that privately owned, but they run in their vicinity of probably 
six to eight thousand head of cattle each. You know, breeders. So oh goodness, big operations. Yeah, it's a bit more than ten thousand acres then, because they'd need all of that themselves. So it's it could be. Oh yeah. Lot. I might I might do a Google while I'm talking to you. Um, yeah. I caught it on to you through agricultural means, so that's been your life as well. But. Um, as far as the the farming fraternity goes, when I was a kid, farmers didn't talk to each other much, but have you got a pretty community-minded, sharing, caring farming group over there? Look, pretty well. It's called the King Island Beef Group, um, and they share resources and, and bring in, you know, support services at times, um, you know, whether it's be uh, animal welfare or dock handling courses, uh, generally field days and that on, on different production methods and, and different fodder, fodder options and, and different pasture options and things like that. Yeah, but definitely um, we're not competing with one another, put it that way. Um, there is a little bit of competition when it comes to the cattle market. There's two buyers here really which um, buy our, our stock which one is Greenham uh, and JBS but they're all transported pretty well to, to Tasmania. Um, for, for slaughter, so they're the actual purchases of our livestock. Yeah. yeah. And, and for the young folk, um, in terms of education, what's on the island, and what do they have to go to the to either Tassie or Victoria to do? Uh, look, yes, the islands. Uh, yeah, from <laughs> preschool, there's uh, um, childcare, preschool, right through to you can do year twelve you know, with support, uh, but mainly the year ten and a lot. Year 11 and 12 go through to Tasmania, not to Burnie, but because it, once again it's it kept it within the state. But it's, it's quite a few at times have gone to private institutions in Victoria, like John Grammar and Ballarat, Clarendon at the times. Uh, different people have gone that way. I, I, some, my, a couple of my children actually did go to Assumption College up at, uh, yeah. They, they'd be pretty handy footballers then, I would have thought. Uh, yeah, they had done, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and do the, and do the kids come back? Uh, like, after they've been educated? Yeah, yeah, both actually have at the moment. As my son's just come back and sort of uh, buying into a property nearby, and, um, yeah, that's a bit of a challenge. But it's been a pretty dry year, but, no, he's come back. Another one still works for us um, on a casual basis at, at home here. Yeah, yeah nice. Yeah. We can confirm that uh, King Island is around about 300,000 acres. Yep. And uh, population last count of fifteen uh, fifteen hundred and eighty. It's going to be bigger. They've diminished a bit, but uh, uh, to your f- yeah. f- fourteen hundred. But uh, th- that that's a fair land mass and, and a lot of people to operate it. And you've got a mine in there as well. But it, I would suggest that the majority of the employment is centred around agriculture. Yeah, agriculture, fishing is uh, still very small. Uh, crayfish and some of the off-shelf stuff, but mainly crayfish is still an industry here. Uh, also kelping, it's a uh, storm, storm cast kelp. That's been a good industry for the island as well, especially during tough times in the 70s and that. It really helped, um, and also in the mine closed. But uh, we did have our own meat works here um, until about 15 years ago, um, and that was a fairly big employer. It was a bit of a, a, bit of a hit when that closed suddenly, yeah, yeah. And the uh, intrigued by the three-team football competition, um you get a buy every second week. How does the final structure work? <laughs> top three make the finals. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Generally, the, the, the top. But yeah, no, they have a sort of a, a semi finish up. But it, at times, it is it is competitive. But it's also uh, often the, uh, the the buy team might have supply some players to the either team. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Sounds a bit social. And it, it could be that, like, uh, I think Fitzroy in two, uh, 1914, you could be wooden spooners and premiers in the same year. It's 1916. 16, was it? Yeah. 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 Greg, we've got to get going because Tommy is, is chomping at the bit in the next studio. Thanks for joining us and telling us about King Island. Sounds fascinating. We're going to get down there at some stage. Thanks for being part of Regional Roundup. No worries. Thanks, mate. All the very best.